Welcome to Novelty Media. In this video, I wanted to make a follow up on GPT-3 to see what actually has changed, what type of apps has been, have been built out and where the current status of it actually is. So if you remember, I actually wanted to make some videos on creating something with GPT-3, uh, but the problem is that the API is still not publicly available. So um, if you go to GPT-3 API access, um, you're going to see that um, we still need to join a waiting list in order to get access to it. But there are a lot of different companies and uh, individuals and researchers and so on that have gained access to GPT-3 and that have actually created some different types of apps. So um, I went to different sites basically just googling and watching what has happened so far and talking with some people uh, that are into the field of machine learning to see if they heard about GPT-3, um, have they been using it. I even talked um, with the university here in Austria uh, to actually see if there has been any progress made on this side. So GPT-3 has promised a lot. Um, like, actually the hype around it was really great and People were thinking this is going to be a revolution, it is going to replace copywriters, it is going to do basically everything. It is going to replace all the content creation on the internet basically. And looking at what has been built so far, enough time has passed. Uh, I think this was released somewhere in June, July or August the first time. So June 11th I think. Um, enough time has actually passed, close to a year, um, to see if there has been any movement on this side. And while there have been interesting things created, there is really nothing that groundbreaking about it. For example, uh, we have here uh, the following post, um, Humans of AI. I think this takes uh, a picture of someone and generates a text. Uh, around the picture. So for example, for this photo, the result here, let me open it. Uh, the result is, I am the CEO of an electronics manufacturing company in China. I'm the uh, first female CEO in our company. When I started, the men didn't want to take me seriously. They thought I was there just to put a pretty face on the company. So as you can see, it is really amusing and entertaining. And if you have watched uh, my tutorial on GPT-2, you have also seen that it generates a lot of fun stuff. For example, um, when you ask it um, who is Darth Vader, it is going to tell you something that uh, something like um, Darth Vader is my father and uh, he killed my sister when I was young and uh, now he's ruling the galaxy or something like that. Whilst really entertaining and funny, there isn't really a business need, there isn't really um, anything that useful that can be done with it. Um, when we go back here, we can also see, for example, this one, um, which is like a to-do app, uh, which tells you how hard a task is. So um, I think I have opened this somewhere or no, let's, let me just open this quickly. So what this is going to do is it's going to tell you um, how hard something is to do. So for example, you can type in a task like uh, train for a marathon and it is going to tell you it's very hard, greater than four hours to complete. So whilst interesting of a result uh, to have a machine learning algorithm come up with that, it is not particularly useful. So the biggest problem with this is that there haven't been really any useful applications generated from this so far. Um, another one that a lot of people are talking about is automatic code generation. So for example, um, this one um, generates code. So someone described a layout, for example, a black button saying OpenAI and orange button saying um, Themesburg. And this is basically the result. Uh, let me open that here. Uh, so the result is a button with a specification of a uh, button black and a uh, button orange, uh, which has the text in it. But 
what you need to understand here is that this is just copy, not copy pasting, it is coming up with different solutions, um, but it is just being fed a lot of stuff from the internet, basically half the internet. Uh, I think it's a absurdly large number of articles, GitHub repositories and so on, that has been fed to this algorithm. And the result of this is um, just stuff that is similar to this. So basically what this is doing is um, you're describing a problem that someone else described on uh, Stack Overflow or GitHub or anywhere. And there is some code defining that. And what it is doing is uh, getting a result based on that. So whilst this is working for really simple stuff for a button here, I still think it would be faster to just copy this from Stack Overflow uh, than type this out. I don't really see any business application there yet. So I don't know how far this is going to go. And I really think that machine learning and artificial intelligence is going to like change the game. It is going to get better and better and better. But the main point is that this is nowhere near that. So we are hitting on a problem here. And the problem is the following. We have machine learning that is awesome for specialized tasks, right? Uh, we have machine learning algorithms that are great uh, for one certain thing, like beating someone in chess, uh, detecting fraud transactions, um, detecting bots, uh, I don't know, like a lot of use cases. And here we are trying to generate a general AI that can do all of that stuff at once, which it does not do it. It, it is funny, the results are cool and you can apply this to a lot of stuff, but you can't really use it. Like there is no real product um, you could trust to do real tasks, like determine if a bank transaction is fraudulent or not, for example. So we are now getting back to the main problem. And the main problem is that uh, we need machine learning for specific stuff. So we have machine learning for specific stuff, which does its job really good. And now we're coming up with GPT-3 that should do all of the stuff at once. And now people are again trying to specialize GPT-3 into certain topics um, for certain tasks. So I think that this is, um, it's failing its purpose. So I don't think at this point that it really has a purpose. It can't write blogs as it should. Um, it can't write code for you. It, it is not going to replace a copywriter. It is not going to, um, it is not even going to replace Grammarly or, or apps that um, correct your grammar. So what I'm thinking is that it is great um, and it is going to get better for sure. And people working on this are going to improve this over and over again. And I'm sure in like 10 years, you're going to have something even better than this. But for real applications, I don't really think um, that this is going to provide too much value. Like there is a lot of different stuff like neuromorphic CPUs, like uh, new types of hardware that are going to make machine learning so much more efficient. So I think the field in general of machine learning is going to explode in the future, like really explode. But coming down to GPT-3, I think it's more hype um, than it promised. I think it's like fun and it can be used for certain things, but I don't really think it's going to be really revolutionary or provide any real value for businesses. So that's my opinion. I have also talked with a lot of people, basically anyone who is uh, into machine learning or has a machine learning job or does research for a university has heard about this and everyone has been following it. And a friend of mine, also has access to it. And he has also been playing with uh, generating code. And the results are basically, it's fun, it's neat, um, it's great research, and it is going in the right direction. But at, as of this moment, it really is nothing revolutionary, nothing new. So it is not going to change anything in the near future. Um, companies are not going to use GPT-3 instead of specialized machine learning models. Um, programming jobs are not going to replace, copywriting jobs are not going to, re to be replaced. So I think it was more hype than it really um, provided at this moment. So whilst 
really cool uh, and going into the right direction. At this moment, I still think it is not, um, not there yet. So those are my two cents. Um, I hope I provided some value to you and um, you understand from what side I'm coming. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to learn more or contact me, head over to NovelTechMedia.com or contact me on my email in the description down below. So thank you so much for watching and see you next time.